Namaste to one and all. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is Ekbar Sreshtra Bharat. According to that, we are learning the art forms of Ladakh. Now you know the status of Ladakh is a union territory. That is on 5th August 2019. The article 370 has been dissolved. And uh, the status of Jammu and Kashmir has been bifurcated. And it became two union territories. One is Ladakh and another is Jammu and Kashmir. Now we are learning the art forms of Ladakh. This year the Ladakh's pair state is West Bengal. Let us see the dance forms. As usual, first of all we are learning the dance forms of Ladakh. That is Katok Chenmo. It uh, is a dance form which is for the nobility of the celebration. Nobility in celebrations of glory and dynasty of the Ladakh. And the meaning of Katok Chenmo is the large roof, large roof. And uh, it is a reference to the uh, huge balcony of the seven-storied Leh Palace. Leh is the capital of Ladakh now. And uh, it uh, shows the reference. There is Katok Chenmo, that is a large roof. It is a reference to the seven-storied palace, which is having a huge balcony. And uh, in honor of the king of the Ladakh and families, this dance is performed. And generally, in the dance forms, we can see drums and oboe. Drums are there, oboe, that is this shape, a con um, shape, a tube shaped uh, musical instrument as also they use. So most often they use these two types of instruments in the dance forms of Ladakh. Let us see Komba Sum Sang. It's a performance, tap their feet. Tap their feet is very important. Three steps. The meaning of the Komba Sum Sang is the three steps and three successive steps they are using. And it is a slowest dance, slowest dance. Then Spa O Dance. It is a warrior dance, Spa O. That means a warrior. It is the legendary of Lingalam Kesa. Lingalam Kesa, that is a famous folklore. Like Mahabharata in uh, India, that is epic. The same way, it is some type of epic of Central Asia. And uh, King Kesar and his divine horse, that is the uh, main characters of this. King Kesar and his divine horse, uh, found in many countries and many centuries. We have seen, they have seen this type of stories. They orally transmitted this uh, uh, story from one generation to another generation and traced from Mangu. Mongolia, Tibet to Ladakh. Mongolian Tibet to Ladakh. The northeast portion, uh, Taraganda, and the northern portion of the Himachal Pradesh, we can see the Tibet. And uh, then China. The Tibet is an uh, autonomous region of this, uh, China. And uh, to the north of China, we can see the uh, Mongolia. So it is the Mongolian that is traced from Mongolia and Tibet uh, to Ladakh and variety of Galam Kesar lore also there. And uh, they orally this is transmitted. Nowadays we are having TV to watch in the evening. And uh, those days we know that the people used to assemble, uh, the, uh, the elder generation used to uh, tell type of folklore to the younger generation that is orally transmitted they perform dance and at the same time it has been written the folklore this uh, legendary uh, what, uh, what the legends were doing all this these epics were written about seven volumes are there then comes the Mendok stand. Uh, here in uh, in this this is a, I told you it is a warrior dance here the instruments they are making swords the cure, then bow and arrow. The cure means a container where arrows are kept. So I am telling this as an instrument or as the properties of this dance. This you can integrate with the chemistry, how it is made up of and about how it works. That is physics like that. You can integrate your subject and topic and into the realistic life. Then comes the Mentok Stanmo. It is a it is performed in Dahanu. That is a place 160 kilometer northwest of Leh. And it is a it is having a distinct facial and physical features. Distinct facial and physical features are considered a descendants of the retreating army of Alexander the Great. So it is a descendants, it is a, a, a referring 
into the distinct facial and physical features, the dissidence of the retreating army, retreating army of Alexander the Great. Yes, Alexander came to India uh, in uh, uh, 326 BC. He uh, came through the Khyber uh, Pass and uh, he crossed the Indus and uh, uh, he fought against the Porus. That is, the Porus had the king, uh, the Purushottama had the land in between, uh, in between Jalam and Chenab. So, the Porus had the kingdom in between in the Chenab and Jalam. So, in between that area, the Porus, the king Porus fought with the uh, Alexander the Great, the Alexander, uh, and uh, they fought. Most often they had the elephants, uh, the soldiers were uh, fighting against the Mas Macedonia. That is, Alexander the Great came from Macedonia and they were fighting, uh, even sitting on the uh, elephant. That is a special feature of this, uh, uh, this war. And uh, as a celebration, and this is also celebrating as a celebration of flower blooming in this time and uh, in their valley. First harvest of these flowers, they will uh, give this tribute to Buddha, the gods and the local deities. That is uh, another speciality of this uh, Mentok Stanom dance, Stanmo dance. Then comes uh, the Jabro dance. It is performed by the nomads of Chantyang. There is men and women form two strings uh, and uh, they tune according to the Dramnyan instrument. Dramnyan, that is Dramnyan instrument. It is a six stringed fiddle that way. And they used to have their movement according to this uh, move, uh, the tune of these instruments. Uh, a major influence it is having the Tibetan culture and uh, this uh, Mon of the Mongolians also having the same uh, same type of uh, dance forms. So, then, so why I say the Mongolians? They as we see that uh, the migrants who came from Mongolia to Ladakh. And that we they so they are the Mongolians there. Then comes the Shandol dance. Shandol dance it is entertained in the courts of kings and they owe the royalty of Ladakh. That is in the court of king to please the king for the appeasement of the king. The Shandol dance. Then something similar to the Shawn dance or Takshon dance. Women perform, the women from noble families. Uh, perform this on the eve of the new year. That is the Sean or Thokshan dance. Then Nyayopa dance. It is during marriages the, of the Buddhist community. They celebrate. They most often wear uh, the yellow gown and shimmery pointed hat also they wear. And they will accompany with the bridegroom's group to the bride's house. And uh, uh, after the marriage, they will go along with the bride also. So you know that they are having a plethora of folk songs are associated with this. Then uh, we can see the pigeon dance uh, and uh, in this pigeon dance they are wearing salma that is a traditional gown they are using and uh, colorful drape also they are having it looks like a wings of the pigeon it is a pigeon dance i told you and uh, they are describing the flight of the pigeons across the villages and along with that they describe the how a lady feeding the pigeons then Lotion dance, it is a dance of harvest dance. It is a Thanksgiving dance. I think it uh, celebrates about uh, two, we two weeks in September. Then Brokpa dance, that is Brokpas, the Aryans. Aryans, they here in this dance, uh, they are having uh, heavy white robes they are using, heavy jewelry they are using with the silver, and copper and a, a large variety of a large amount of flowers also they are using in this uh, dance forms so uh, even though main major dance forms i wrote anyway you just listen just see what are the properties they are using what are the costumes they are using this you can interrelate with your subjects and topics that is the main things why you are learning this art forms of different states this as especially the pair state 
then brokpa uh, then comes a balti dancer it is a dance of the muslim community it is performed a special religious occasions then comes uh, uh, then uh, another thing is that in this balti uh, dance they are using the balti languages then comes the Kashan dancer. It is a horse sport. A horse sport. There is horse races there, and uh, it uh, depicts the tradition of Ladakh. Uh, different communities are participating, and uh, that type of uh, decorated uh, type of dress dresses they are using in this horse race. So these are the major dance forms of Ladakh. Let us see the fairs and festivals of Ladakh. Let us see the fairs and festivals of Ladakh. First of all, we can see Hemis Gomba. It is the largest and richest monastery located in Ladakh. And uh, this uh, festival is having full pomp and show to commemorate the birth anniversary of Padmasa Padmasambhav, the founder of the Tibetan Buddhism. And uh, it is celebrated for two days uh, on the fifth uh, lunar calendar. 5th lunar month it is celebrated and men wear the traditional attire, women also having the heavy jewellery and headgear. Then comes Sanskar festival. Sanskar festival is a winter sports and youth festival. It has celebrated in 2021. Where that is in the valley of Union Territory of Ladakh under the Kelo India banner in collaboration with the Ladakh Tourism. First ever 13 days this celebration had uh, in between 18th to 30th January uh, 2021 that is this year. And uh, then we can see Golden Namchota. It is a popular and vibrant festival of Ladakh, often celebrated by the Mongolia, people of Mongolia, Tibet and China also. They commemorate the birth and nirvana of J. Songpa, that is a scholar of Tibetan Buddhism. Then monastery, the, for, uh, in this uh, festival, the monasteries and uh, buildings are illuminated uh, and uh, food is also served, a special food uh, are the butter tea, momos and tukpa, the, uh, they are uh, served uh, in this occasion. Then Spetuk Gust, it is a first festival after the Loser festival, in Loser festival there is a new year festival and uh, ma it is uh, mask dance is associated with this and uh, monks wear masks and the local crowds also will be there. Then comes the Loser in Ladakh, the Ladakhi or Tibetan New Year. It uh, originated from 15th century and uh, 15 days they are celebrating this Loser festival. We have seen in Himachal Pradesh also this uh, festival is there this year February, February 12th it has been celebrated. Then. Ladakhi Buddhist offer praise to the deities uh, in the Gompas and shrines. Gompas means the learning center that is a, like a universities and uh, Gompas and shrines. Then the Sindhu Darshan festival. And this Sindhu Darshan festival is celebrated in Leh on the full moon day that we call it as Guru Purnima. Devotees collect, collect water from different rivers of the country uh, uh, across the country and they will come and gather on the banks of the river Indus and they pour the water into the river Indus and it shows the icon of communal harmony and unity of India and about 15 monks, 15 monks offer praise on the banks of the river. Then comes the Metho Nangrang festival. It is a joy of colors. It is the festival of oracles and inside Metho Monastery, 15th day of the Tibetan calendar, it has been celebrated. The first month, in the 15th day, it has been celebrated. 600 years it has been celebrated and belong to the Sakya school of Tibetan Buddhism. This festival comes in between the end of the January and early February. Then we can see the Saka Dahwa, that is a national festival of Ladakh. It is considered as the holiest day of the Buddhist and it comes in April. Then comes the Harvest Festival. Ladakh festival we call it Ladakh festival it is a harvest festival and uh, it is uh, about uh, it is celebrated between 1st and 15th that is two weeks it has been celebrated in September 
in September, the common people may be that much enthusiasm, uh, they will celebrate this harvest festival. Then comes the Yuru Kangya, there is a victory of good over evil. Then another one, Tixi Gusta, that is honoring the victors in the Taxi Monastery, that is another one. Then Staguru, that is a festival of commons. Then in between, those months, that is, that is a festival celebrated in Ladakh, then liquor and discate, that is two days uh, it has been celebrated and uh, in, um, in front of the lake palace uh, about annual praise have been offered there and it is celebration of virtue. So these are the faiths and uh, festivals of Ladakh. Let us see art forms of Ladakh. Now let us see the art form of Ladakh. Craft also included here. The traditional art of Ladakh, one, uh, Ladakh is wood carving and it is popular in Ladakh. That is wood box made uh, to uh, various types of wood box are there. There is Changse, door, wooden lentils etc. The Chokse is a, another spelling also C-H-O-K-S-T-E Chokse. It is a law heighted table, uh, wooden table uh, which is uh, having oblong shape. Oblong shape, two sides long and two sides short and about 3 feet by 1.5 feet and four corners is about 90 degree. That is a uh, measurement of the Chokse table. Then metal work, metal work, different types of metal works are there from silver jewelry, uh, jewelry to different sculptures we can see here. And uh, here, uh, chiseling, uh, the wooden work when wood is carved that we call is whitling and when the metal is carved that we call it, it as chiseling. And chiseling in the Sanskrit area, we can see that it is made of metal work in silver, brass and copper. It is, uh, they have made uh, tea and uh, chank pots, then tea cups, uh, lids, uh, stands, then hookah bases. Then ladles and bowls, different varieties of things are made with the metals. In different varieties of metal, silver, copper and uh, uh, brass. Then comes uh, the textiles are concerned uh, or the woolen is concerned. The patu that is a warm rough woolen fabric uh, used especially in the winter time. And uh, basket uh, woven of willow twings and a particular variety of grass. It is used to carry vegetables even the babies can be carried in this type of baskets then the textile works are about the textile works pashmina garments pashmina garments are made out of the wool of the kel goat and it is shawls stalls and dresses have been made they are using the waving with the hands and looms also using and there are different varieties of embroidery with the exquisite colors. Uh, the colored threads have been used uh, to draw the designs of or make the designs of chinar leaves. Uh, then mythological figures and landscapes. Here just I have drawn the picture of chinar leaf as a green leaf and the, this color leaf that is in the autumn season the color will change. Then the autumn that is the falls, season of falls that color will change. Just I have made an attempt to draw that only. Then another thing, another thing the artisans also make the caps, settees, gloves, socks, hand woven carpets and rugs. Then come to the paper mache is another uh, object they make paper mache that is paper soaked in water and uh, it will be soaked till it dismantles in that water dismantles and after all till uh, then adding some adhesive uh, solution that is some type of uh, gum they are adding and making into a pulp and pulp is molded and making into desired shape. Suppose you are making a, a flower pot. After making it, keeping it for drying it, after dried uh, and the, it can be painted with the colors and also make intricate, draw intricate and brilliant designs on it. So I hope you understood what is the major uh, art and craft form of Ladakh. Let us see the uh, dress of Ladakh and food of Ladakh.
Let us see the dress forms of Ladakh people. Gaucha. It is a traditional gown worn by women. It, its name is Kantop and it is having accessories like tipi that is hat then lokpa it is thick cloth uh, of women uh, which is giving extra warmth to the body then the same name uh, that is gaucha that is a traditional gown by used by men and the costume is worn around the waist and neck with a designer and colored uh, sash which is known as a uh, skerag that is a particular uh, designed waist and uh, neck they are using a particular type of uh, costume worn by them then here they are using colorful shawl also they are using that is along with the uh, accessories uh, the hat uh, then lokpa they are using a colorful shawl they are using and uh, and worn on the back side to carry parcels and children then uh, about the ladakh people the headgear is headgear is very important they are using heavy headgear sometimes it is filled with uh, uh, decorated with the flowers and uh, the headdress of muslim community we call it as jagin and uh, uh, here the uh, normally we you can see they are using a yoga in cases in case of special occasion they are using a woolen dress called a yoga that is far is there it is may, some places you know that they are decorated with the silk uh, also and this yoga it is made of woolen and uh, uh, on the waist here we have seen skerag but the men is using here it is called sul that is a uh, uh, dress which is the costume what they are using in, on, in the, on the waist and uh, shoes is known as pabu it is decorated type of uh, shoes they are using then huge heavy blue headdress they are using that we call it as perak these are the dress forms of Ladakh let us see the food of Ladakh people tukpa then momos are main food of Ladakh we can see what is how tukpa can be made it is a soup or it is a stew combined with the noodles assorted vegetables if we are making vegetable uh, tukpa or minced with the meat let us see what are the ingredients we needed first of all we have to make noodles noodles with the wheat or barley flour and uh, add with the salt and make the noodles how we can make the noodles just i will tell you how to make the noodles this wheat add with the salt water make it a smooth dough and after 10 minutes again knead once again and divide into three large portions and roll each portions into very thin rounds tossing on floor uh, cut the rolled portions and make it thin stripes like uh, uh, noodles and uh, keep it aside then we can see how the soup can be made what are the ingredients ingredients one tablespoon mustard oil chopped one onion uh, or spring onion can also be used for cloves cloves then garlics all these are chopped ones the tomatoes two tomatoes chopped two teaspoon cumin seed uh, powder then uh, two teaspoon uh, garam masala one teaspoon black pepper powder one cup spinach uh, leaves uh, roughly chopped uh, then two mulangis also chopped one then two spring cor coriander chopped uh, and one lemon juice how to make it uh, first of all make uh, take a large saucepan and uh, heat uh, mustard oil add onion and garlic and sort it after all add tomato let it become soft and uh, mushy after all uh, add cumin seed powder then garam masala and pepper powder then uh, add spinach and radish make it as a masala that is this uh, spinach and radish combined with this uh, masala then two three minutes uh, cook it and uh, add three cups of water then let it boil in a, with a brisk boil you, we can add the uh, cut wheat strips into the boiled 
tukpa that is boiled water that is how we, th we make the tukpa or this that is the uh, uh, soap what we are making and uh, after all add salt and lemon juice then later garnish with a coriander leaves and uh, it is uh, spicy and it will make more warmth to the body as this Ladakh people live in the uh, cooler uh, place you know that more winter they are uh, suffering from snow and ice so it will give a uh, spicy food and uh, it will give warmth to the body so I hope you understood how the uh, what, uh, what is a major uh, food of Ladakh and along with this momos can also be uh, used so I hope you understood the art forms of Ladakh when uh, you are getting a project or a learning process you add the uh, uh, take the topic take the subject take the topic and integrate with the different art forms and understand that whatever we are learning under different subjects uh, whether it is science or social science or mathematics whatever we learn and uh, understand that it is interlinked inter, uh, inter, they are integrated uh, and in actual life how it is performing what are the importance uh, of these different subjects in the actual life in the realistic world hope you understood make the projects properly and thanks for your cooperation for the updates of states and union territories of india the link of my video is given in the description box